<laughs> well, it, it is nice to know that there is some ghosts in the ghost busting world nowadays. Because I read online, it's not enough ghost busting, but you know. No, it's, it's, <laughs> I think I think you and I need to name this episode "Woke Busters." I I'm so tempted to to call it "Why Ghostbusters Is Woke" and just see how many views it gets. Now, what, what? Spoiler: Apparently, it isn't. So you know, there's there's the theme of the episode. But what's what's really funny is like so when the film came out last week and the critics, not all of them, it was I think it was a minority, were like, "Oh, boo! It's terrible." Uh, but Rotten Tomatoes famously reputable source for Rotten Tomatoes that never ever gets review bombed. No, not, uh, at all. not at all. The the fans loved it. So I don't I don't know what it's sitting at at the minute, but it was like forty four percent. It was high eighties on the audience last time I checked, which was a right. few days. Right, well, there you go. That's plenty. Um, so I put out a screenshot of that, um, saying you know that the moral of the story here is um, make your own mind up, and it's always it's always a case of make your own mind up. Yeah. Um. So what's that? At? So it's at forty four percent with critics, eighty four percent with the audience. So, yeah, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure for Afterlife it was sixty four percent reviewers, ninety four percent or ninety six percent with fans. So, yeah, yeah, so make make your own mind up, right? But when I when I said that, I got inundated on Twitter with, oh, it's woke, oh, it's terrible, oh, it's bad, they've ruined it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you and I engaged with a few of the individuals uh, who believed that they should only they should be a cap. You're only allowed one, two games. Well, that, yeah. To to be fair, that was one person, wasn't it? That was one person that came yeah. back. And for anybody who doesn't know and who has got way too much time in their hands to scroll back amongst everything, seriously, don't scroll back. No, don't. It was somebody called Kim, who's an aspiring Hollywood superstar with 18 um, followers <laughs> on their account. And they kind of, I, I can't even read it all and I don't really want to read it all. But the basis of it was it's woke. So we are like, why is it woke? You've seen it. I haven't seen it. So it's therefore, pushing, we're at different it's angles. Push, pushing an agenda. Pushing the agenda. There's too many gay people in it. And we're like, well, should, should there be a limit? And, there's, and, there's and a they term. came by, with, yes, there should be a limit. Sure. <laughs> I, One per in film. My 20, in my 28 years of life, I've only ever met two gay people, and that's the reality. I'm like, yeah. that's what she said. And I was like, yeah, yeah. okay, bye. And we gave up because we weren't giving them any more oxygen. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think what's but I think what's really funny is like last night I put out on on Twitter tagging Ghostbusters Rose and Empire that you and I were going to do a chat. Have seen it? Did they like it? Now keep in mind we were inundated when the movie came out, and we people were. were jumping on really quick to say they loved it or they hated it. Uh, but when I said that we was it too woke? Was it not woke enough? Like what is woke? Um, not, but one reply on Twitter. I got one reply on Twitter last night, and it was from a friend. So it was, well, we got one reply from Susie MC. So we're giving Susie MC a shout out because she came back with a reply going, I thought it was pretty good, but films these days keep trying to have these same world ending baddies. Again, I have no issue with that whatsoever. But I do not feel like the stakes ever ever feel as high as they did for the baddies in the 80s or 90s films. Again, I'm, I'm not arguing that. Little too much fan service to think I preferred the last one more. I am 100% okay with mm-hmm. that sort of critique. That's not me saying I per- I totally agree with everything that Susie said, but I'm not going to dispute it because I don't, I'm not one of these that thinks me and you like to film, so therefore everybody must like it. And people oh, who no. didn't like it are wrong. You're wrong. It's an amazing film. Um, I think what we what we try and do is rationalise what people are saying. Yeah. Because I think there's a real, this is, this is not new, this is not Ghostbusters specific, but I think there's a real danger of just toxic masculinity or, you know, sexism going on in the industry where, you look at Doctor Who, they cast the first ever woman in the role. Uh, well, it technically wasn't the first ever. Jodie Whittaker was not the first woman doctor. Joanna Lumley was the first ever doctor uh, back in the 90s when they did a comic release special. Written by future showrunner Stephen Moffat, he wrote and produced and did the, the Children Need special. Anyway, Red Nose special. But 
as soon as they announced that it was a woman, review bombed. It's going to be terrible. Just give them their own. Give them their own show. Give them their own films. When Captain Marvel got announced, review bombed before it even came out. You know, we don't need women superheroes. <laughs> when Ghostbusters 2016 came out, and you and I agree that the marketing for the the all female. Yeah. Oh, I hate the market. Marketing was awful. It, Terrible. It, it, but, you know, the first trailer came out and it was like, you know, 30 years ago, four scientists saved New York. So they set it up like it was going to be a sequel. So expectations were already so high. And then they came out and said, no, no, actually, it's a reboot. And I'm happier that it's a reboot. That's fine. But I, I have no issue with that whatsoever. But the marketing was wrong. They, yep. they let it stand on its own merit. Don't be like... This is a woman film, a woman Ghostbusters. Da, 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 da. Just let it stand up on its own as a comedy. Yep. And when you watch it, it's a great film. The yep. director's cut is better. But yeah. I think what's really terrifying now is that film fans, ironically, are gatekeepers and they're like, no, 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 you, you can't have that. You can't be a part of our club. They didn't want kids to be in Ghostbusters. They didn't want it to be kiddie Ghostbusters, even though they were all great. And was Stranger Things not one of the most successful TV shows in the world? But also, sticking with Ghostbusters for a little while, we won't like make this 100% Ghostbusters thing, but we're obviously going to touch upon it because it's one of the targets from the, the idiot people online at the minute and the film's current. <laughs> when the original Ghostbusters came out back in 84, the audience, they're now bitching and moaning about we don't want kids as Ghostbusters, were younger than the characters uh-huh. in this new one. Uh-huh. So it's like, so you you want Ghostbusters that are older than you? But you said know. to me when the when the first teaser dropped for Frozen Empire, you said to me, I guarantee you people will be complaining that it's not as good as the eighty four film. Awesome. And it's because they're not twelve years old anymore. Mm-hmm. They've grown up. And yep. this film is scoring really high with like eighteen to twenty five year olds. Yeah. And that's just stats that's just that's just the truth that's just market research i so, was i was chatting with annette over the past couple of days about what i've been chatting about on podcasts and stuff and she her son is now 30 and he grew up with the star wars prequels right and because he grew up with the star wars prequels he loves the prequels and they're his star wars mm-hmm. and yet you that's not a you know you'd get buried alive on the social media saying that you prefer jar jar binks to ewoks or whatever but <laughs> it, it is i think a lot of people who watch films now and complain about them they they're trying to replicate the feeling they got back in 1984 when they were watching the temple of doom or 1984 when they were watching gremlins or yeah. 19, 1984 was such a good year or they watch keep, ghostbusters they keep saying oh we want a gremlin sequel we want a gremlin sequel no you don't like, you will absolutely tear that apart, like, because it will not be exactly as you remember. And it's all the people who say, oh, we want, Ghost- we want Back to the Future 4. No, you don't. No, no, nobody wants to, no. You don't, you don't, <laughs> no. You don't, you don't want Back to the Future 4 and you don't want a reboot. You just don't. The closest thing you've got now for Back to the Future now is the musical. And the musical is a really good way of celebrating what you love about Back to the Future without bastardizing it and without making it a sequel or a reboot or whatever it's just they've taken the characters that you love and the settings that you love with the car and they've put songs to it and it's songs that you recognize and songs that you don't and that is a really clever way of carrying on that nostalgia without ruining what came before and even a sequel a reboot a prequel a requel whatever <laughs> right it's too many names for yes many. we're just going to go back to that well nothing can ever subtract from your memory your feelings your nostalgia for a film it can only add yeah so i just i don't like this whole give them their own film give them their own tv show etc like did anyone complain about ripley back in the 70s and 80s being a female action star did anyone complain about linda hamilton and terminator like police academy half and half men and women did anyone they like, did anyone really come was really anyone that upset like why are men in particular and some women i've seen some women get really angry that there's a woman doctor like oh it's not the same it should be a man why because it's always been a man and do you not believe in change it should be a man and it's just like what's yeah. wrong what's wrong with <laughs> your your audience is 50 50 down the middle why why are you only representing half and not you know what? Like, what, what the, white men. <laughs> what I mean, it's interesting when women go, 
I don't think she should be a woman doctor. Like that, that's more that's more an interesting conversation to have with them than a man going, I don't think you should be a woman doctor. Because with a man, when you go, why not? You're be, you're an idiot. Doctor who's an alien. Get a grip. Um, with the woman one, you're like, why? <laughs> but um, well, where was I headed on that one? Um, so yeah, an interest. I mean, nostalgia is a huge thing. I've I've seen fifty three films this year. And four of them have been Roadhouse, right? So that's really... So I've watched the original one twice and I've seen the remake twice this year. Now, I've seen the 1989 Roadhouse loads of times over the years. I saw it back in, like, 89 when it hit VHS or 90 when it hit VHS and loved it. Loved it ever since. So I've got the nostalgia thing for that one. I watched the remake and I enjoyed the remake. It's more of a reboot, so it's not, like, exactly the same plot, but the foundations are there in the same way. We're going to reboot Ghostbusters. We're going to have some people catching ghosts. That's it. You know, you do a totally different film. It's more of a reimagination type thing. And I liked them both. I liked the new one. I liked the old one. And while we're watching the new one again, Annette said to me she'd never seen the Patrick Swayze one. So I'm like, well, there's an interesting experiment because she'll be watching the new one, which she enjoyed. Let's go back and watch the original one see which one you prefer she preferred the 1989 one so taking nostalgia out of the way yeah she still preferred one film over another but nostalgia is a huge thing i just i'm genuinely we've, we've had this conversation so many times now mostly on here about mm. film fans just not enjoying film like i would love to scan their brains and go what is it that you want like, what, what is it you're after from a film? Like, I've seen so many people say about Frozen Empire, oh, it's just the same as the rest of them. I'm like, well, it's not, <laughs> for a start. You know, when, when Afterlife came out, they came away from New York, came away from the firehouse, it was all the original characters, and it was a film about legacy, and it was a film about Phoebe, mostly Phoebe, figuring out that her grandfather was Egon Spengler, and there's a big threat coming, and he had a plan. He's not alive anymore, so she has to complete the plan. And everybody went, oh, it's too different. It's not Ghostbusters. It's not in New York. There's not this, that, the other. So they bring up the sequel, which is in New York. It's about the firehouse. They bring back the originals. They bring back the new cast. Oh, but now it's just too much of the same. And exactly. They, and they say, you know, they were like, because Good Morning Scotland on BBC Radio Scotland tried to get me into a fight when they invited me on, on Friday. Because like, oh, well, this is review said that there's no Ghostbusters. How can you have a film called Ghostbusters about Ghostbusters? And I'm like, have you seen it? And no was the answer. It's like literally the second scene, there's a pre-title scene that takes place in the past, then there's the titles, and then it goes right into now as the Ecto one hurtles down the road mm -hmm. as they're busting a ghost. Yep. And I think in the original film, they catch Slimer. Yep. That's it. There's a montage, but you don't see them catching any ghosts in the montage. No. And then you've got it goes there at the end and the state and the state of marshmallow man the second film they bust the ghosts in the courthouse mm -hmm. then there's a montage and i think they catch like two or three ghosts in that montage and then there isn't a ghost again until we go at the end yeah the reboot they catch the the, the dragon demon at the gig mm -hmm. and then and then that's it. <laughs> and, then, and then they catch the ghost at the end. They, they stop the ghost at the end. Afterlife, they catch Muncher at the start of the film. And then nothing to the get goes out at the end. So what's... I think whatever it is, there's going to be a certain um, demograph demographic or numbers who will go after anything. You know, it's the old, I've done 15 things for you, Fraser. Well, I asked you to do 16. Right. I've done all those 16 things for you, Fraser. I've completed the list. Yeah, but you did them in the wrong order, though. Right. I've done them all, Fraser. I've done them all in the correct order. Yeah, but you could have done that one better. I think there's always going to be a, a, an amount of people who will go, I'm going to get it. I, you know, and it's just I, I don't understand the mentality of them. I, I think th the Internet is obviously a huge problem. Yeah, because it just breeds toxic traits. But like, I think... There's a lot of people, and it'll be the same people who think I'm on the internet. I need. I'm going to be an expert on anything. I saw somebody. There was a an issue, an in, it, not an issue. It was an incident in Baltimore where a bridge has been hit by a, I saw by, a by a boat this morning, yeah. 
Yeah, so Already I've seen cool. people going, well, actually, looking at that video, the bridge should have been designed. Really? You're a bridge expert now? You know, and maybe that person is a bridge expert. I don't know what they do for a living. But uh, and then last year, I think there was a woman that went missing. You remember the woman that went in the river? Yeah, yeah. I have never seen so many forensic police experts in my entire life. And then that case was was solved or whatever it was. And then the Ukraine Russia problem. I've never seen so many geopolitical experts come out of the internet woodwork in my entire life. So I think everybody goes, I've got a keyboard. I could be an expert. Now we're on a we're on a podcast. I'm not I'm not an expert in films. I watch films and I love films and I like talking about films. Not an expert. Oh, no. you're an expert in catching ghosts, clearly, because that's your, really? it's your second job. But just just so you know, like it's been a very long time since I've worn this flight suit. I did this for you. <laughs> Ignore ignore that side of it. I'm no longer affiliated with that group, but yeah, I've not taken it off yet. Um, they'll probably leave a comment going, "You just don't represent us," and they will say that they will. And but you I, but you've disclaimed yourself by going. Actually, I'm not associated, so pay attention. I did, to I did co-create that group, but I'm no longer part of that group. No. But um, yeah, I think it's just really sad that people just don't enjoy things anymore. Like yeah. when Kate Middleton kind of vanished and everybody was and I and I was one of them. It was like conspiracy theory, conspiracy theory. And then the poor woman comes out and says, actually I've been diagnosed with cancer and getting treatment. And everybody was like, oh, okay, well, okay, okay, sorry, yep, yep, yep. It's like you do not know what someone is going through in their day to day. But not all of them, a lot of them came out and went, well if you just said that earlier then but it's like will you just have a breather? I know. Will you just calm down from just trying weird, to scorch the earth. Ship online of I have the right to know everything. And if I don't know everything then it's a conspiracy or you're out to get me, blah blah blah. Remember when the the, the COVID vaccinations were coming out and it was like, Oh, they're gonna install five G and you and they're gonna track you. Yeah. And I was I was walking past a very small group of protesters and I mean maybe 10 to 15 people in the pouring rain and they're shouting about how Nicola Sturgeon, who was the first minister of Scotland at the time, she's putting secret police in your children's schools and she's monitoring what your children are learning and what your Smartphones, they monitor everything anyway. So, you know. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, you post on Facebook, would you like to share your location? Yes. Oh, I can't understand how they know it's got air it doesn't matter. And I just, <laughs> why are you so crazy about this and, and I had a friend we're not friends anymore and um, we weren't friends for such a long time then we were friends again and then he turned out to be just if not nutty or just mad and he came out and he went oh the, the COVID was a hoax and I was like right okay I'll follow your path and this isn't a COVID chat right this is a this yeah. is film fans being film fans need to chill chat but uh, he was like oh um they found documents to say that Fauci, who was like the American Jason Leach or whoever whoever you guys had out in England, who was like the, the, the big medicine PR guy who was like, here's what we have to do. Chris somebody, maybe, anyway. Chris Whitty, uh, yeah, we had. Yeah. yeah, so they had Fauci. And they say, oh, there's documents that show Fauci were in this lab in, in, in China or, or Hong Kong and they, they fabricated the COVID virus to keep us all under control. And I was like, okay, Who's got these documents? Oh, Russell Brand has them. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I was like, what? And I was like, uh, and I was like, okay, let's just put a pin in that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and have you seen the documents? Go watch his video and you'll learn the truth. And I was like, right, I'll bite. I'm a rational person. An hour and a half of Russell Brand's truth mission. <laughs> Russell Brand, who's been very silent since all those accusations came up, but that is neither here nor there for me to judge. But... Um, I watched that whole video, and not once is a document revealed. Yep. But if you're sheepish enough, you'll believe it. And I think it's the same with like just film fans. It just takes one person to say that you. I think you saw it yourself. Like someone was like, "Oh, a friend of mine says it's rubbish, so I'm going to skip it." Yeah, I see that a lot. Yep. And they're they're the people I want to get to. I I got sent a press release through this morning for Madam Web, which is coming out in digital end of the month this isn't a mad web advert but uh and i amended the press release and put a whole big paragraph in about yeah the internet kind of didn't like it but i watched it thought it was fun so make your own mind up and go watch it yourself worst that can happen is you spend two hours watching a film you're not a huge fan of will madam web change your life 
No. Will it be the top 10 film of the year? No. Is it a good couple of hours of entertainment? Hell yes. And I put that in and sent it back to Sony. I'm like, hey, I've done an article for you. Because it's just like, watch it yourself. Don't... I mean, people go, oh, I don't want to waste my time for two hours watching a film. That's pretty much every film. You know, it's... really, films aren't, they don't change your life. Some do, but the majority don't. They change your life. Do you know what I mean? And and let, let's just let's just break it down a little bit. <laughs> hey kids, let's rap. <laughs> like nobody sets out to make a bad film, no. right? It's not some great plan. And you have to appreciate that hours and hours and months and months and weeks and years of your of their time, of crew, all the crew, and you're talking hundreds, all the cast, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, all the PR all the promotion, all the planning, all the scheduling, all the film. Like, I make films, for, not for a living. I don't make money from it. But I make, you know, short films and I make projects for a living. Sorry, my Greenlit campaign page is flying through the roof all of a sudden. <laughs> three pledges in and I'm so intrigued. But just cast somebody who... I saw that, yeah, and I don't know who it is. So, you know, I'm looking forward to when you announce that, quite, how, quite however a, you do. Quite a well-known known name in Scotland. Uh, but they've got 64,000 Twitter followers. Ooh. And they've started following uh, Faithful, so I wonder if the, if he's hit a retweet button and maybe it's going Fast and Furious. Anyway, I'll check in a minute. Fast but, and Furious, well, is it Vin Diesel by way of Scotland? No, but they did film quite a lot of Fast they and Furious. They did film in Edinburgh, yep. But, and some in Glasgow. But, no, but like, people just don't appreciate how much hard work goes in from here is an idea for a film, TV show, play, musical book, whatever, here it is at the end, it's out into the world. And people are so quick to go, oh, it's crap, oh, it's terrible, oh, I'm not going to give it a chance. Or worse than that, oh, I've seen a still image, or I've seen a poster, that'll suck. That's going to be awful. Terrible. Yeah. Why? Just looks it. Yeah. It's when, you, it's when you said that you enjoyed Mad and Web, and you said, I watched Mad and Web and I enjoyed it, and some ass hat was like, oh, it's woke nonsense. And you're like, what do you mean? Go watch it and see. I have watched I've it. I've seen it. It says it what, up there on the post. What, I've just watched it. I have, I have watched it. What do you mean? <laughs> Silence. I, took, I Googled it this morning, and I can't remember the name of the website, and I wouldn't announce it anyway because that website shouldn't exist. But there is a website that you go on, and it tells you the walk points in each movie. Somebody, and, somebody's done that on Steam, the video game platform. Someone. Yeah made a, a list of woke games and why they're woke and, and to avoid them. So have you seen Madam Web? No, not yet, but I'm going to watch okay. it. So these aren't spoilers, so it's you don't have to worry about that. I've watched plenty of um, So I Googled it because I knew we were going to have this conversation and I, no, this guy never came back and told me why Madam Web was woke and I still, for the life of me, I can't work out why it appears woke is it got a woman in the main title yeah i don't think that means it's woke because films have had women in them for years they just won't stop making movies damn them and um so i googled it and it there was two points that it was woke one is the character of madam webb she has been going through the foster care system within the film and she mentions at one point she said yeah my uh my foster dad or whatever it was he was an illegal immigrant and he got deported. So now that's why I'm on my own and I'm just, you know, looking after myself type thing. So there was that. That's like a single line in the movie. That's what, because it's forcing the fact that all oh, immigrants, political asylum and deportation. So apparently it's woke because of that single line in the movie. And then the other part is Madam Webb ends up looking after three girls, sort of takes them under her wing. She doesn't got wings, but, you know, okay. that sort of thing. And one of the girls is a skateboarder and she's got a skateboard and she wears like a beanie hat. So she's a little bit of a, a tomboyish type girl. That's the other reason. I'm like, I still don't see how that's woke. There is no mention of anybody's sexuality in the film. There's none of that. There's no trans characters. There's no anything. There's no LGBTQ plus as far as I know, but because she's got a skateboard and wears a beanie hat woke and I'm like, really? Let's get off. Let's get off this website because you know. Seems no, like I, I, I've come up. I've made. I finally made my mind up that I'm not going to click on the comment section on anything anymore because that is where the dribble lives. That's where the brain dead go to die. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it is. So, going back to Ghostbusters, like, they put out a trailer and there's a shot of four new Ghostbusters all wearing red coats. And Ghostbuster fans are obsessive and we like to have everything that's in that movie, especially if you're a cosplayer. Like, this, this was a lot of work, right? Because um, you've got your name patch, you've got the no ghost patch, you've got, I've got like a, a pee hose connector down here that so when my belt goes over, I can plug in the pee hose. I've got the arm pads that are over there. Yeah. I've got I've got like lever key fobs that they have in the movie, but you, but they just you just attach the gun to it. Like it's it's never ending. So these coats came out and Ghostbuster fans like, and they're so resourceful. And like, where are these coats from? So they find that they're from this Canadian company called Wuxley. And they make these coats, and they're like seven hundred dollars for these coats. Wow. So Ghostbuster fans, more money than sense. Maybe they should fund my film instead. <laughs> go and yeah. buy these coats, and then replica companies come out and go, "We've got the coats. They're not the same as those coats, but they're close enough." One hundred and twelve dollars, and you're like, "Well, that's more doable." And I was, it was my fortieth birthday, so I went and spent one hundred and twelve dollars, and I got the coat. I love my coat. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the red coats are all over the advertising, all over the marketing, etc. They're in the they're in the movie for about a minute and a half, which is fine. Don't care. Oh, all these sad losers went and spent all the money on those coats, and they're not even in the movie. What's your problem? Well, they are in the movie, just not yeah. not for as long as you thought they might be. So it's like, well, they're still in there. Yeah. What's your What's your problem? And there's a there's a scene in the trailer of Bill Murray wearing sunglasses, and he's like, "Tall, dark, and horny, twelve o'clock." And they're like, oh, all those idiots that went out and bought those sunglasses and even they wears them for a minute. So? Still wears them for a minute. Still would be my them. argument, yeah. What does, what, does it, what does it matter? I have a red shirt in my cupboard, which is the same shirt that Bill Murray wears in one scene in Ghostbusters 1. Because I wanted it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've got the denim jacket that, that, that Dan Aykroyd wears in one or two scenes in the original, and he wears it again in, in yeah. Rosen Empire, which I was very happy about. Um... So I was just absolutely like, can you not just let people enjoy things? No. No, I mean, I, it always makes me laugh when I see people on social media go, oh, everybody on social media, they're just after attention. Well, yeah, because that, and including the person that's just typed that. Of course, yeah. we're, of course we're after attention at social media. We don't type stuff generally thinking, oh, I hope nobody reads that. Oh, no, let <laughs> me just hide it. Of course we want people to read it. Um but I don't, and I think everybody just, a lot, well, not everybody, but a lot of people just, they, hey, look at me, my tweet's better than his tweet, and my Facebook thing's better than theirs. It's just like, chill it's out. A com- just, it's a competition. It is. It's competition for clicks. It's like, you know, and even the big companies are getting in on it, your IGNs and your Joe Blows and all this sort of stuff. Um, I saw actor Scott Atkins tweet out that he'd seen a new Roadhouse. He liked to do Roadhouse, but he thought some of the CGI fights were a little bit, not great, and he doesn't understand why they didn't do more physical fights. Fair enough, Scott Atkins does a lot of fight stuff, so he's he's what I'd call an expert in screen fighting because he's done a lot of them. Next thing, our uh, websites are picking up on Scott Atkins lays into New Roadhouse. Well, he didn't. He just made a comment, and loads of them. It's like, just get, have, a, have a breather. Calm down. Movies are fun. Learn to enjoy them. It's just, it's just mental. Like I just don't understand. Like, you're right, though. Every, everyone's out for attention, right? Everybody wants yeah. to, right? everyone wants clicks. And, and like, we've said this before, you look at all the reactionary websites, like YouTubers and everyone who reacts to things. The whole thing is big capital letters and it sucks. It, remember that language? That language has gone away, have you noticed? Like, when a big blockbuster movie came out last year, bomb, flop, disaster. Mm. Have you noticed that language has gone away? It does seem to. What's it been replaced with, though? We've not seen what it is. I don't know. And they've not been, and I I kept a very close eye on it with Ghostbusters because I thought if there's any movie that they're going to bring that language back, it would be that. But Ghostbusters has done really well. Yeah. There might be a drop off between this week and next. Yeah, there'll be, from what I've heard, there'll be a drop off and then it'll pick back up. Because obviously you've got Godzilla X Kong, weird title. Um, coming out, so people who would watch Ghostbusters will probably go watch that, yeah. and then the week after that, you know, Godzilla will be. Yeah, because sleep. not everybody can go out straight away and go see. No, the, uh, was it Rebecca or Natalie that we know who was like, can't wait to go see it. Natalie, or, yeah, Natalie. Can and I said, yeah. go, go, 
go go and she's like why how long has it been out for and I said not long but we don't know how long these things last now in the cinema they usually out for about three four weeks and they slap them on streaming straight away yeah. um, but there will be a bit of a drop off but what they can't complain about now is that Ghostbusters as a whole has made w- over one billion dollars mm-hmm. for a comedy about Ghostbusters yeah and it just, it was never going to reach the heights of Barbie. It was never going to reach the heights of Oppenheimer. It was never going to reach the heights of Marvel in their heyday. It might reach the heights of Marvel now. And I'm a Marvel fan. That's not me mm-hmm. having what Marvel. Marvel have a problem. Um, DC have a constant problem. But it's just like, I just I just hate the, the, the language of bomb flopped disaster. And these are the people that are desperate for clicks. And yeah. you wonder, do they believe what they're saying? I think some do. Some are trying to wish it into realization. So I think some people are like, this film's going to be terrible. And you can just see them sitting there at the keyboards going, I really hope it bombs. Why? Yeah. If you don't if you don't want to watch it, just skip it. There's lots of films that come out where I'm like, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey is a great example. I remember when that came out and I'm like, I don't really want to watch it, but I hope the people that watch it enjoy it because that book just sold insane amounts. Yeah. Um, and if it's good, it's fine. If it's not, yeah. oh well. Sorry for the people that paid money for it, but and it came out and made a lot of money. So I just, it's, yeah, I don't get it. And you and I are never going to solve it, are we? But see, no, I think solving it. I think you've come up with a solution where I will take a recommendation from somebody's comments. They're like, "This film's amazing. Oh, I'll watch that." But if they're like, "It's terrible," I ignore that and make my own mind up. But you told me, you told me that. You enjoyed Rose House, so I'm going to watch Rose House. I did. You told me that you enjoyed Madam Web. I'm going to watch Madam Web. Madam Web reminded me of the same type of movie that Sam Raimi's Spider Man was. Yeah, because is it not kind of set around the same? It's set yeah. around the same time. I think it's like set in 2003 or something like before, that. It's, it's before Peter Parker was born, right? It and is literally yeah. like once, like weeks before. If not, I mean, I, I thought it looked really interesting based on the trailer. I like, you know, it's fine. Is it going to be in your top list of comic book films? Probably not, but it'll keep you quiet for an hour and ten, and you'll see some fun stuff. There's some humour in it, which is like that's quite funny. It's just really it worried about fine. Craven the Hunter now. Yeah, well, I've heard bad things about Craven Hunter right through production and stuff. So I, not, who knows? I don't not, know. Is it not the same writers for all these films? Probably, yeah. I wish I could. I wish they'd hire me instead. I wouldn't make them any better, but I just want the money. I think you would make them better. Because <laughs> you get all these people going, no, change this. You're like, no, don't change that. Don't do that. Let's put yeah, 20 yeah, trailers yeah. out. Let's but, not. But what point, do you, what point can you no longer push back? That's yeah. the thing. Like, we don't, and when, when it's my turn, I, I will let everyone know what that process is like. To get an understanding of it, because I think that's one of the again. I think that goes plays into nobody sets out to make a bad film, and people don't often appreciate how much people and how much work goes into making a film. I and think just, people, there's, there's a certain amount of people that just don't care. They're like, oh, I'm not bothered. No. I paid money for that. <laughs> yeah, you paid like five dollars. It cost two hundred million to make, or a hundred million in Frozen Empire's case. Probably a little bit more than a hundred million after marketing, but. Yeah. And they went hard on marketing. But, like, and this is what's so good. We're in a streaming era where literally you go, oh, I want to watch that film. You can go watch that film right now. Mm-hmm. There is so much choice. You don't have to worry yourself about Doctor Who, Ghostbusters, Kong, whatever, Iron Web. You can go watch something you do like. And if yeah. there's nothing out there in the current market that you're, that you're interested in, you can go back and watch. Ghost House 89, Ghostbusters 84, Crack Ed 84. Do you know what I mean? There's no, there's nothing. If you, nobody, I say this so many times, nobody's putting a gun to your head and saying you must watch that film. Unless they've got a podcast or a website, in which case they have to. <laughs> they have to for their listeners and their readers. I, am, I saw somebody this morning, I don't know if they were a podcast or a website, but they went, I don't like the look of this film, whatever the film was, but I feel I need to see it. It's like, why do you feel you need to see it? No, you don't. You just don't want to watch it. Don't watch it. 
Yeah. I've had emails from PR companies going, would you like a screener? I'm like, no, thank you. I've said that. I'm like, oh, my God, I have to because they've offered me one. There's yeah. not enough time in a day to watch everything. It's impossible. No. You start paying me to watch films, I'll do that. But until then, no chance. I'll watch what I choose to watch. You always see these things and it's like someone's offered you a million pounds to watch the same film every day for a year, watch a film. It's if it's a torture. It's like, I will watch Ghostbusters every day for a year. Yeah. I would, I would watch, I'd watch any film. I said, tell you what, a million pounds, I'll watch you. you choose the film. I'm good. It's a million pounds. I'm all right. Yeah, exactly. I can put up a foot for a million pounds. The put argument, the argument I see quite often is people mistaking this venom spitting because they're passionate. Mm. It's okay to be passionate about movies. It's like, passionate is not, that film's going to be an absolute pile of crap. It's going to be terrible. Look, it's woke. That's not passion. Passion is, oh my God, I'm so excited. Can't wait for this film to come out. Oh, I didn't quite like it. But there's another one coming out. They're going to do another one. That's passion. Passion is not trying to scorch the earth with scorch the earth and take that stuff. Do it. I don't. I don't like the fans who will have a go. That's another greenlit pledge coming. This, nice. It's this podcast. It's a lucky thing. What's going on? Are we live? But um, yes. Genuinely, someone put in two thousand three hundred. Somebody well, we, has somebody yeah. has done. Yes. Wow. While we were having this conversation, I've gone from two six oh five to four nine oh five. How much more do you need? You might as well do this live. This, this thing's going to be online by tea time, friends. Let's worry about it. It's where can people uh, find uh, it? <laughs> and how much do you need? Faithful fairy tale short film. Uh, we're on Greenlit. Um, Stuart will paste the link underneath this i imagine uh i need 10 grand to do two days of film in the post-production how much have you got so far i've got 4905 well another pledge has come in let me tell you <laughs> oh my god we're at 5405 there you go so you're at 5405 you need to be at 10. it's the same guy who keeps putting in literally the same person has just put in 500. Look, See, guy. Look, guy, whoever you are. I've got Simon, a coffee account. Chuck me a fiver. <laughs> Simon, Simon, Web, Simon Webster, whoever he is. Uh, 500 to get the cushy puppet head that we've got made. Yeah. Uh, 300 for a costume. Yeah. Uh, 1,000 to be in the film. So he's going to have a cameo. Give him a big uh, hug. A big hug or a high five or whatever. Is, is, is and, st are people still elbow touching now? No, or is that, I, no, 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 shake no, hands no, and hug no. him. And, uh, and then another thousand pounds for producer credit. Nice. So, what Simon, go check my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I, I wish there was more Simon. So yes. what we what we short five four four five. So I'm now four nine. Four five nine five away. There you go. Doing tell well, your you friend, Simon. Tell <laughs> your Simon. <laughs> Simon, you're awesome. Whoever you are, Simon Webster, Fraser likes you. So. Yeah, Fraser loves you. Fraser you're loves not giving me any money, so balls to you, Simon. <laughs> Don't take my money away because <laughs> I said it, not Fraser. But yeah, uh, but yeah I, just, I just wish people wouldn't take down other people just because they didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Like I don't think you, you and I would never say. Oh, I love Roadhouse. And someone says, well, I think it's crap. And you'd go, well, you're wrong. You would no. go, well, that's your opinion. Unless they come back, and I saw somebody do this about Roadhouse going, there's just no story to it. And I'm thinking, there is. Because I've seen the film. So when somebody said, oh, there's just no plot, it's like, well, there is a plot. And, you know, to use the Swayze one, it's like he's a bouncer. He goes to this bar. He meets a lady. He gets involved in a thing that's trying to take, you know, bad guys trying to take over the town, and there's a big fight, and that's a plot. There is a story, and the new Roadhouse has a has that type of basic plot, but a little bit more. And you're like, how can you say there's no story? It's like, and you do see that quite often. We're like, oh, there's no there's no ghost busting in this new Ghostbusters. Well, there is because I've seen it, and I know that's wrong, but it's I just. Think, I think. The I think the criticism of that, the, the Ghostbusters thing, is like Phoebe early on gets benched because she's 15 and the mayor of New York, like, she's a minor, she can't be a Ghostbuster. So they bench her until she's 17. Valid valid point in the legal world, I would think. Right. It's like, do you know so, what? Let's put it to her, one side. So her story becomes, if I'm not a Ghostbuster, then who am I? 
and she keeps seeing the car going out to go catch ghosts and she's kind of been left behind. Mm. Um, so they go off to catch ghosts, which you don't see, but again, you see it at the start, see it there. And it's more about her and she gets lost and she ends up connecting with her ghost, a lady ghost. So um, when you when you say her ghost, who's this? And I'm not too sensitive to spoilers, but there's uh, a lot of people haven't seen it, so don't go too heavy. It's a girl called Melody who she, they, she, she burned her house burned down and like, her family died and they've all moved on and she's the only one that's left so she's lost in the world too okay she connects with phoebe because they're both really smart and there's a there's a bit like i think phoebe definitely develops feelings for her and i think vice versa but it's not this big forced lesbian love story no nothing sal- there's nothing salacious about it there's no contact because one's alive and one's dead and it and you know, that's that's what it's about. Um, this was the undertone that that idiot troll was going on about. There was an undertone in the movie. I'm like, oh no, not an undertone. Yeah. Oh no. So it's so it's more it's more about Phoebe figuring out where she fits in. Mm. And you know, she's 15. This is her first crush, and it's her navigating her feelings because she's a, she is autistic in the film. So it's her. Figure on neurodiverse, and it's and it's her figuring out who she is in this whole world. How is that a bad plot? I don't know, and that because uh, I've seen a lot of people latching onto that. So, you know, oh, oh, this isn't something I want my children to watch. So go back and watch the first one when you're 13. You got Dan Aykroyd with ghosts going down on him. Yeah, you've got a scary library scene which just scared the pants off most kids because they didn't know what they were going to get. They didn't know what no. Ghostbusters were. Uh, we were fine, you know. A lovely tribute to the library ghost. And I've the, seen that gif or just, image or whatever, yeah. just obviously taken, they've extracted the footage of the original actress who played her, because she'll be long dead now. Yeah. And they've taken her and they've put her into now, into the film now. And I just think that's a love. Rather than recast her, mm-hmm. I think it's just a lovely retouch. You know, that's just nice. And she scares the crap out of Ray and chases them at the library. And I think that's nice. I think and it, and is that ghost? Is it the same ghost that's in the first movie? Does yeah. does does Dan Aykroyd go? Oh God, not her again! Type. Yeah, yeah, basically. That's yeah. amazing. Because I've seen got, people complaining about fan service. It's like I like fan service. Yeah, because you've got you've got the guy who ran the library. He's back because Ray wow. up outside the library because they're going to go speak to another character. And, he, and they're like, oh, we don't think you can park your bike here. He goes, oh, no, no, they know me here. We're friends. And he comes out and goes, Dr. Raymond Stanton. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, it's like, what? there's nothing wrong with fan like, but, but I say there's nothing wrong with fan servers, and there is nothing wrong with fan servers. What's wrong is they want it both ways. They don't want an original story, but they don't want fan servers. Yeah. What they want is the original movie, but not remade and not recast and not redone. So let it go. It's so it's it always <laughs> reminds me of the Star Wars prequels. So you know, Jedi was the last one. We didn't get any Star Wars for a whole bunch of years, and then George Lucas went, "I'm doing more Star Wars." And he's like, "Yay! Finally, we get more Star Wars." And then the Phantom Menace comes out, Attack of the Clones comes out, which I'm not a huge fan of that one. Uh, well, and then Revenge I... of the Sith comes out, and they're like, "No, nothing like the original Star Wars. They suck." So George sort of goes, "Right, I'm out of here. I'm going to sell it to Disney." Force Awakens comes out, and everybody's like, this is too much like the first Star Wars. It sucks. What do you want? Do you want it to be different? Do you want it to be the same? We just want stuff we've not had yet, and they just get really in, just, like, just, entitled. Just say, I enjoy the prequels. <laughs> I like the prequels. The, my issue with Attack of the Clones is it just looks too cartoony with the, the CG. Yeah. It doesn't look but like it was, the but it rest. Was CG, it was CG in its infancy. It was, yeah. And I think that that might be one of the first films that's shot on digital opposed to analog. Like, yeah. Well, okay. Neil Neil Johnson's screaming at his monitor, going, "I shot the first digital one." Because he, yeah. If you ever speak to Sorry, Neil, Neil, ask ask him about his Lucas digital thing. It was. Sorry, Neil. Neil, Neil okay. apparently did it, and then Lucas went, "Oh, I did it better because okay. Lucas has got a bigger megaphone because he's yeah, George okay. Lucas, really." So. Sorry, hi, hi Neil. Neil. Yes, apologise, Neil. Of, in terms of blockbuster franchise films, like that was I think nicely I, done. <laughs> In terms of blockbuster franchises, 
that works. No one's ever. Um, but yeah, it was. They don't, it was they, don't know, they don't know what they want. You know, that that's the point of it. Like I, I sat in the cinema screen waiting for the trailers to start for Ghostbusters, and I went on to Zavi and straight away you could pre-order the 4K steelbook. Um, and as I'm having that, and I ordered it. Yeah. And and you know, I said to my wife, I said I've ordered it, and she don't she put she didn't turn around and go, but what if you don't like it? Like there was no question of it. She was like, that's great, baby. You deserve a treat. The thing is, it's like even if you, uh, it would be interesting to know what a Ghostbusters film would be like that you hated. What could they possibly do to it? And you come out, you're like, that was just, oh, maybe kill them all. I don't know. Maybe that yeah. you'd be like, I'm done. If they, killed, if they killed the OGs with no sense of purpose, mm. if they did it for shock value, that would annoy me. Yeah. But it probably wouldn't be enough for me to stop watching. Like, there are certain episodes of Doctor Who that was that's been written by a transphobe, which I really at the time before that all came out, I really enjoyed those episodes, and now I just don't watch those episodes. Really? Does it change? See, I'm always I'm... I can't I can't I can't support transphobia. No, and right? I, I mean I've not seen the episodes, but within the episodes, was there transphobia, or would you was no, there none within the episodes? No, 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 he was very, no, no, he was very good at sticking under the radar. And and I like and he's a he's also a gay writer who's against trans people. I'm like, go under that. We all yeah. want the same thing. Uh, but he set his Twitter followers after me, um, and I didn't. I, I had nothing to do with him. I wasn't. I I, I didn't tag him. Didn't talk about him. Nothing to do with him. It was. I went. I went after another turf, um, because she was like, oh, I I support the LGB community. And I was like, what happens to the Q and the T? Like, you can't support one of. Like some or, or not any of it. <laughs> I, I, I had a fridge magnet on our thing, and it was like a uh, definition of a woman, and it was like woman, female, blah blah blah. But that was made by like a, a hate protester called Posey Parker, and they like, literally like they go after Nicola Sturgeon, they go after everybody who, how dare you, you know, any any man who believes in, that trans people exist, you're a, you're a misogynist or you're a sexist or you're a paedophile or you're a groomer. These are all the words they throw at you. Um, because you, but but trans men also exist as much as trans women, but they don't talk about the trans men. They leave the trans men alone. That's okay for some reason. And my my uh, my nephew is trans, um, but it's just so anyway. So she had that thing, and it was that magnet, and it was from like a hate campaign. So she she can't go and say no 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 no. I love the community. I'm a fan of the community, but I have that behind her clear as day on the video on her apology video yeah. so i just i i retweeted it and tagged in the bbc and i was like really have you, have you do you want to do your research before you maybe look at this and uh, that writer from dr who like clocked it and he shared it to his small pl- plattering of followers and like oh no a fridge magnet how dare how dare they that's a really scary, you know, just being about an ass flat. And all of his followers came, up, came after me on Twitter. And it's like the abuse the abuse I got over like three days for saying trans people exist uh, is nothing compared to what trans people get every single day, where they're literally being murdered. But no, no. How dare I call it some of like, <laughs> them? So, yeah, so to summarize, that's why I don't watch those episodes anymore. <laughs> they- yeah, I mean, I I can separate art from artists art, art. unless the crimes are within the episode type thing. So it's like I can still watch Miramax films because they're yeah. made by a lot of people. And and uh, my argument for the Doctor Who thing would be, yes, they were written by somebody you don't like, but there's still a lot of people in it that you do like, and of the course. plot's fine. Yeah. And so there's always that. But I, I think it's it's a non unwinnable conversation, and I think the oh, internet no, I- is is filled with unwinnable conversations whether it's i liked roadhouse no you didn't i, I did really you're lying <laughs> no it's you, you your know. anecdote is not reality we, we love we love the internet but it is a cesspool uh, unless you sure. choose to stay out of those waters and i think replying to comments on groups that you're not even a member of forget it it's just not worth the hassle yeah it's when they made when russell t davis decided that davros was not going to no longer be going to be a wheelchair because he yeah. didn't want to be ableist. Like, he, he made a conscious decision. He was like, from now on, this is what this character looks like. And everybody went after him as if he shot a bunny rabbit in their in their holes. That's and the next like, season, actually, is the, the bunny but, rabbit shooting. And it's just like, 
it doesn't need to bother a TV show doesn't need to bother you that much. No. Uh, and if it does, stop watching them. Seriously, you've got yeah. bigger problems if you watch an episode of a TV show or a film and it turns you into like the Incredible Hulk and you split your pants and, you're like, and you rage for days. You've got bigger issues than, you know, what, unless it's unless it's a politically type. Somebody comes out, for example, and makes a movie about how the Holocaust never really happened. By all means, go after and they and they palm it off as like this is a documentary. No, dude, seriously, no, we're coming after you for that one. That's fine. But if it's an entertainmenty popcorn thing, like a bouncer in a roadhouse called the Roadhouse, which I thought was very clever. If it's a film about ghost busting. If it's a remake of a graphic novel called The Crow, calm down. It's it's yeah. all right. It's just a it's just a movie. I can even hear it in Michael Winner voice. Calm down, dear. It's just yeah, a film. A, but films and TVs and plays and books and musicals and CDs and you know whatever. These are supposed to be entertainment. Hmm. They're supposed to be escapism. Something that you can share with your friends and go, how great is that? What are cooler moments? You know. The reason I, I got into the whole Ghostbusters cosplay thing is because a lot of my friends were also doing it and I wanted to be a part of it. And everything that came of that was great. Mm, apart from, again, yeah, certain apart, from, certain, apart from stuff. Certain aspects of the fandom were just really toxic and horrible. Like, and, it, and I still see it to this day and I'm no longer a part of it. And I go, I'm glad I'm out of that. Do, do you and think it, with the Ghostbusters cosplay thing at night time when the, when the sun goes down, they're coming out like West Side Story? And, they're like, <laughs> and it becomes like Anchorman or whatever, and they're like, bang, 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 bang. There's like big fights and all these they all, they all bring up, they all bring up the photon guns and the wands and the clash, but because they're all 3D printed in plastic, the road sweepers are going out the morning after going, What the hell is all this See, stuff all over the road? What's like going again. on? <laughs> Where'd that all come from? There's just no need, there's just no need to be that angry about a film or a TV show or whatever. Like, because I'm I'm also part of the Doctor Who fandom. Nowhere nowhere close to them. A lot of them are, uh, because it's just horrible. Like it's just not all of it. And there's a lot of great, a lot of great stuff that's come out of Doctor Who fandom. I met Sophie Aldridge, who's one of my friends now. We work together quite a lot. We're going to work together some more. And you know I'm I'm friends with people who write for Doctor Who. I'm friends with people who work in Doctor Who. And it's that's a lovely place to be. But the minute they cast someone who wasn't a white man. Hell. <laughs> yeah, I just I don't get it. It's I don't think we ever will. I think you've just got to go. You know what? They're they're clowns. I'm just gonna stay away from them. But what's as as we attempt to wrap up? As yeah. we attempt, what's what's your kind of part and shot here? What's your message to anyone? I can't wait to see what title you put on this, and I really hope you go big on it. I really hope you go. Woke nonsense. Da, da, da. I really hope whatever whatever draws them in. What, yeah, just see if it works. See if they put yeah, a real exactly. nasty we'll negative title have. and see if it works. But what? Is, like... but what's your what's your part and message here to people who do get angry about these things? Seek therapy. <laughs> Seriously, for the love of God. I mean, it's like I, I probably watch on average. 300 films a year, 250, 300 films a year. I probably watch out of that amount maybe 30, 40 that are pretty bad because I'm quite good at choosing what I want to watch. It's like, oh, look, an animated musical. I don't like musicals. I don't like animation that much. I'll watch that because I have to. No, I don't, so I'll skip it. So I'm pretty good at choosing films. But if I watch one that is terrible, I just go, well, at least that makes the next one better. You send me a message and go, that was terrible. Then you move on and be like, yeah, I don't go right. Come on, Fraser. We need to we need to do a oh, podcast oh, 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 about oh, oh, the Point tonight. Break, the Point Break remake. We've got to do it. it should never have been done. It's 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 it's, it's blasphemous against Patrick Swayze and, and all that sort. Of, just make your own mind up. I, um, Save I'm, yourself time. Don't get involved in conversations with idiots who go, "Oh, it's all Roadhouse. There's no plot. There is a plot. Otherwise, you'd have no film. There is a plot. You might not like the plot, but there is a plot." My advice is twofold. One, calm down. It's fine. It's not. It's not the end of your world. My second. My second thought is, go try and write a film, <laughs> and then try and fund that film. <laughs> and try and fund that film and make that film and put it out to an audience. And not in a derogatory term, but I, if you think you can genuinely do better, 
as most writers do, then go, go do it. Go there. And if, it, if any trolls are listening, which I'm sure they've clocked out by now once they realise that we're not, you know, scorching the earth with them, we is... I can just to see if we change our minds up. If, if you're a troll and you think, I don't want to make a film because if I put it out there, the trolls are going to come after me and it's going to be horrible. And you are a troll. Maybe try be nicer. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, I don't know, get a grip, basically. Go outside, see, get some fresh air. <laughs> put your phone but seriously, you clearly don't like movies very much, which that I'll never understand. The moment every film I watch is terrible and makes me angry, I'm going to start doing jigsaws or go and get some Duplo bricks or finger painting or something like that perhaps if you want to but we're never we're never going to solve it we're just not but i think it's important to bring it up and go maybe, maybe the issue is deeper than i didn't enjoy that film because a woman was in it or i didn't enjoy that film because it was a gay person in it or i didn't enjoy that film because it was a trans person in it and and trust me these people aren't going away no. trans people are not going away Gay and lesbian actors are not going away. Women Can't, aren't women aren't going away either. Women certainly aren't going if away. If they did, we'd be knackered. There'd be no babies. I mean, yeah, we'd fall, and even just on an organising level, we'd all fall apart quite quickly. Oh, of course we would. We'd all just murder each other. <laughs> but you know, this fil- films and TV and books and theatres and musicals, they're only going to get more progressive as time goes on. You, and the thing is, it's like it's not just films; it's video games, mm-hmm. it's politics. Oh, oh, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's politics, it's video games, it's which console you use. I like PlayStation. You're a dick. Xbox is better. No, it's not. And so it's that. I it is movies. <laughs> it is um, it's everything. It's we live in a polarized world, which sucks because it's like nobody can. And you, I've, I don't know if you found this or not, but have you ever found it? And I may have seen you nearly going into this and i get it because i've nearly done it myself where somebody's like i didn't and i'll use ghostbusters as an example i didn't like ghostbusters i thought it was terrible and our instinct is to defend the thing that they're attacking the their point their point is going i don't like it i thought it was terrible yeah. that's not a you can't really go you're wrong mm-hmm. unless they say there's no ghost busting in it then that is wrong yes why why? But your instinct is to go back at them and go, no, it's written. And you go, oh, actually, no. They, it's to tell the difference between somebody being an out-and-out dick troll by going, there's no Ghostbusters in it, it's ruined, it's woke, like my puppet said the other day. I uh, and that, I didn't like That was you? That was me. I was the puppet. <laughs> yep. I, I've got a, I've got a Sid the Rabbit puppet. We should do our own show. Sid and, Sid and Mr. Angry. Mm-hmm. But... Um, Maybe there was a point because I was thinking about a puppet. It's puppet. just, I just, I just don't, I don't know what the word woke means. No, I don't. I think it's, as far as I know, it means it's progressive thinking and changing the way you look at things, which I think would be a good thing. Anything maybe in the remit, they, they think is wrong. I mean, Annette and I are watch, rewatching Grange Hill do, 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 right do. from the beginning, and we're at the series now where it's around the early 90s. Nowadays, there are a group of people called travellers. Travellers will live on various different sites and move around. In a series we're watching back in the 90s, which is a BBC kids show, oh my God, they don't refer to them as travellers. There's all sorts of harsh language. You go back to the 70s, and there was a, a I presume, I don't know where he came from, but it was a, a, a dark-skinned little gentleman. The language that he gets called in those early 70s, in the mid-70s episodes, you would never get away with saying that on TV now, nor should you. Have they got, we, got a content warning at the start? They do. This reflects um, yeah, the, the views time. from 1970 or whatever, so it's good that they got a warning. But you watch and you go, that's a BBC <laughs> children's show, and it was acceptable to be on TV then, saying all these things. It's not now. You won't get away with it now because we progressive. Time's change. Times change, people change, you know. Open your mind, you might like it. Exactly, and if they don't, close their mind again and just go, they should just go live in a basement after these trolls, to be fair. They but they are in their basements, they already are. I will recommend, my final recommendation is something on BBC iPlayer, and it's a TV show called Kin, which oh, is an yes. Irish TV <laughs> show. I'm enjoying it so far. I can recommend X-Men 97 
on Disney Plus because it picks up right after the original series. Yeah. But if you don't want to watch five seasons to go what the hell's going on, there are plenty of recaps on the YouTube. But the animation style is gorgeous. Nice. And How many was, episodes have you seen? Because there was two that have been put on. The minute, there's two. one coming out tomorrow. But so far, they've both ended on cliffhangers, which I quite like. Mm. Because it makes you go, oh, what's going to happen next? And I love that it's not all up there at once. I love that I have, I'm forced to wait yeah. week after week. So it gives me something to look forward to. And I like that. I don't, I don't like the, the drop it all at once. No, I don't. Because then, because then when they do that, they go, right, well, how many people watched 10 episodes over a weekend? Not as many as we thought we would. Right, boom, bin that show. Yeah. So I like what, the anticipation of going back to a calendar and going, oh, Friday's a new episode. I did it with Masters of the Air. It was like Friday, yeah. episode, Friday, episode, yeah. and it lasted nine weeks. It was great. For us, Sunday for us, Death in Paradise, Thursday, Apprentice, because we're idiots. Uh, there was probably something else at some point, but it's, it's oh, Saturday night, take away on a Saturday. You know, it's just fun little things like that. So. And there's a Steve Martin documentary dropping on Apple within the next couple of weeks as well, so or next week or so, I think. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but I still need to watch the Michael J. Fox one. Oh, that you will cry. Oh, I know. Well, I, it's really, really good. But it's there's, there's that one. There's a Selena Gomez one, which is really good. Love Selena yeah, Gomez. Uh, that's a really good documentary. I net watched that show. I didn't really like it before, but now I really do. And I'm like, that's that's good. That's, the point of it. that's what you want from a documentary. Yeah, well, I, didn't, only, I, I didn't like it, but now I do. Only Murders in the Building will be coming back at some point. That's yeah. from now. Cobra Kai season six, the final season, that'll be on at some point. Plenty to look forward to. We're only on March, end of March. There is a lot of stuff coming out. So don't watch stuff that you're not interested in. <laughs> it's pretty much the whole point of this. If you don't want to watch it or you think it's going to be terrible, skip it. Watch something else. It's like people go, oh, Star Trek's gone woke. Yeah. <laughs> Why is Star Trek woke if they cast a, a black woman in a main role on the bridge? They did that shit in the 60s. <laughs> Get a grip. Catch up, people. <laughs> anyway, I assume people have sat through our hour and two minutes. I mean, you know what? These are two rational gentlemen who make a good point. My mind has been changed. I hope so. I, do you know what? It'd be nice. I'm sure some. I'm sure we will get some messages of agreement. Um, I noticed we didn't get any wokey trolls. We did say oh. we were going to read out their, their comments, but we didn't get one. So thank you, Susie MC. For uh, for but your somebody, nice somebody for your nice did, message, somebody did just shrug their shoulders. That is, they did. I didn't quite. I'm like, they got a We've got a beef muscle are, spasm or something. I don't. <laughs> are they misinterpreting as going oh woke bad, or are they like oh I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what they're thinking. Yeah. But I think it's so funny that we said, right, we're going to read out your comments. Like, here's a platform for you. We're going to read out what you... Um, and I don't... We weren't going to criticise anybody. I think we're just going to read them out. And um, nothing. So was it because we said we're going to read them out? Or was it because the film is number one in America and it's not a billion dollar franchise? We will never know because nobody replied. <laughs> oh. Other, than, is, other this, than Susie with a good answer. So This has been a blast. Therapeutic. You know who never comments on our videos? Who? Barry from Dean Structor. Why does he not comment? He's not like you. It's upsetting, isn't it? I don't know if he's what I don't even know if he's what I don't know if he watches these. Barry, what have I done? He listens because he yeah. said he listens to him in his walks. Ooh, okay. So Barry Barry, Barry let me let me know why you, why you don't like he always complains Fraser. If he comments on his stuff. Yeah. But yeah, we'll come so come on Baz. Come on, Bazza. If you listen I, I tend to listen to most of my podcasts on an iPod, so I do the audio. I don't really go for the video type yeah. stuff. So anybody who wants all of these, they are also on audio as well. So I have to... very little time to listen to podcasts. <laughs> well, you're too busy trying to get your film funded. Uh, what have I got left to go now? Let's do the math. So ten. Pounds. Simon Webster's taking all his money back. He's Five, like, four, sorry, I typoed. They are uh, four nine four five nine five to go. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's a good shift. That is impressive. We shall have to podcast more often. <laughs> Clearly, there's no nothing to do with the famous person that's um, tweeted your link out. Probably, it's all uh, to do with this podcast, which hasn't even gone out yet. Zachary Levi shared it once. Nice, which is quite nice. Uh, a troubled individual who also needs therapy. Um, 
Who else? Uh, I tried to get Henry Winkler to do it, wouldn't buy, wouldn't budge. Mm. Um, Nicola Sturgeon. She yeah. Her, her. Are we, do we are we allowed to go? Yay, Nicola Sturgeon or? Yeah, I, she's, a, she's a good person. I, I miss the newsletters where it's like, yeah, they're good now. They're not. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. I, I don't know. It's hard to keep no, up nowadays. No, no, no. She's absolutely. Insane. She's seven hundred pounds. Cool. Uh, yes, I think she was most fit. Tony Curran. Mm-hmm. He shared it. He said he was going to donate, but it hasn't. Oh come on! He could drop four grand and not even notice. He could drop three and a half and throw five hundred into my coffee maker. Come on, <laughs> Curran, sort it out. <laughs> um. So yeah, those are the those are the famous people. Nice. It's, it's nice. So what we need to do next for the next podcast is we need to try and find a more. I mean, this is had its positivity, of course, but we've had a good old rant about idiots. Um. So we'll, we'll find a nice positivity topic for the next one. Um, well, we're going to do Bond. We are. I like Bond. Yeah. Um, and I think since the, have you, I've noticed that, oh, this week, next week, they're going to announce such and such. Bond. Yeah, it didn't happen, did it? No. no. Funny that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought the contracts were supposed to be signed last Friday. Didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, because surely if the contracts were signed on Friday, we would have known on Saturday. Yep. Trust me, Aaron Taylor Johnson ain't going to be Bond. I'm nothing against him. I don't think it'd be a fine bond, but what happens? You know. Turn around tomorrow and they say, "Here's the announcement: It's Aaron Taylor Johnson." Then I'll look like a dick. I said that to Annette last week. I said, "Look, I said I'll be putting all these messages out, going, it's not going to happen. It's not going to be Aaron Taylor Johnson. It's not going to be." And yes, there is a possibility I may look like a total idiot if they do announce him. But so I'm gambling. But I don't think it will be. I was watching the Simpsons episode, an old one, and it had uh, what's what's the name of that director? Where's Hog? Where Hog? Oh God. Oh, Werner Herzog. Yeah, so he's in it as a magician, nice. and um, he's telling the he's reading cards and he's telling the future. And Homer's like, "How many more Ghostbuster films are they going to make?" And he's like, "Four. The gay Ghostbusters is fantastic." <laughs> oh, that will be next one. That's the next one, Fraser. No, no, they've got Phoebe in it, and she's definitely got tendencies. Okay. Ghostbusters so, Walk Empire. Okay. Do you know what? I did, it did make me chuckle when that guy went Walkbuster. So I'm like. I'll let you have that. That, that. that did put a smile on my face. So it's like trolls can what? entertain us a little bit, but you know. But yes, thank you for allowing me to put on a flight suit. I, I decided I, I went against the pack because yeah. it wouldn't fit on my chair, but it is behind, it went behind me. Uh, yeah, let's see what this does. Definitely. But you enjoy the rest of your afternoon, Fraser. Thank you. And you I will chat to you soon. Yes, I'll let you hit stop recording and I'll say goodbye to you properly. Thank you very much. I will.